Now let's look at an example of pro product costing cost flow. And how do we calculate this stuff? So the example asks us to assume the company has the following income statement, create a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Now in order for us to do that, we need to understand what goes into the schedule of cost of goods manufactured, or what equation do we use? So for us to use this, or for us to, to find this out, we need to use the equation that we, we saw that is beginning work in process, plus all the arrows that go into the work in process, which are direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, minus the ending work in process, and that's gonna give us our cost of goods manufactured. And at this point, all it is is a plug and play. We're just trying to figure out what we have and what we don't and what we can calculate for the stuff that we don't. So beginning work in process, we have that. It gives it to us as at 145,000. That is January 1st, so it's the beginning of the year. So we're gonna add that to our uh, schedule. Direct materials. Direct materials, they give it to us because it says direct materials requisition. That tells me how much I've taken out of raw materials and put into work in process. So that number is gonna be 320. So we're gonna put that into our schedule. Direct labor also is given to us, direct labor costs of 162000 so we're going to put that into our schedule. Manufacturing overhead, on the other hand, it's not given to us directly, outright, but it gives us enough information that we can calculate it. It gives us kind of what manufacturing overhead is, is uh, made up of. So we just need to go through and find the manufacturing overhead pieces. Now, the manufacturing overhead pieces are, remember, manufacturing overhead are the, the costs that go into the production of the product that is not direct material and direct labor. So let's just go down the list. The first one we see on the left side is the indirect labor cost. Well, that's one that we need to include. So let's go ahead and put that in our, our calculation for manufacturing overhead. Uh, the next one on the right side, it says utilities for the factory. That is a manufacturing overhead. So we do want to include that. The next one also says utilities for the corporate office. We don't want that one because it's not in the factory. That is something that's going to be more on the period side or the selling and admin side. So we don't want to include that one. Depreciation for the factory equipment? Yes, because again, it's dealing with the factory. So we want to include that 148,000. Uh, depreciation for corporate equipment? No, we don't want that one because again, it's for the corporate side. Supplies for the factory? Yes, we want it because again, it's for the factory. Whereas supplies for the corporate office? No, because that's an SNA expense. Maintenance for the factory? Yes. Hopefully you're getting the, the kind of commonality here. It all says factory. Uh, and then also insurance for the factory. We want to include that one as well. So those are all of the components of manufacturing overhead. So if we add that up, that's going to give us a total manufacturing overhead of 460000 That's what we're going to use to move over to our schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Let's move that over. The last piece that we're missing is the ending work in process, and they give that to us. It says work in process inventory December 31st, and that amount is 120000 So we're going to include that into our schedule. And once we have that, we're going to do the calculations for it and find that our cost of goods manufactured is going to be 967000 now, 967000 represents the amount of cost that comes out of work in process and goes into finished goods. Now, what if they ask us to calculate the cost of goods sold? Well, again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use this, uh, an equation that we know. Uh, our equation is going to be beginning finished goods because it starts in the finished goods, uh, plus the arrow that goes into finished goods, which is our cost of goods manufactured, minus our ending finished goods, and that'll tell us how much cost went out of finished goods inventory or cost of goods sold. So again, plug and play here. Beginning of finished goods, we know that. It gives it to us January 1st of 375000 Put that in there. Cost of goods manufactured, we just calculated that. That's 967000 So let's put that in there. And then finally, ending finished goods. Uh, it sells us December 31st, 400000 So let's put that in there as well. Do the calculations, and we find that our cost of goods sold is... 942,000. So that's the amount of cost that moved from finished goods inventory into cost of goods sold uh, account. Now the last thing is it may ask you to create a simple income statement. Now we know simple income statements from a financial standpoint start with sales or sales revenue minus our cost of goods sold. That's going to give us our gross profit minus our selling and admin expenses or SNA expenses and that's going to give us our net operating income. Again, plug and play here. Uh, sales revenue, it gives it to us as 1.542 million. Let's put that in there. Cost of goods sold, we just calculated it, 942,000. So let's put that in there. That's going to give us a gross profit of 162,000. Our SNA expenses, they don't give that to us outright, but again, much like manufacturing overhead, we can calculate this. We just need to look and see what is being given to us. So in this situation, if we look down the right side, we see uh, utilities for the corporate office. Remember, we said that wasn't a manufacturing overhead. It had to be an SNA because it's dealing with corporate side. So let's include that one. 
120. Uh, depreciation for corporate equipment. Again, we're going to use that one, 75,000. Uh, supplies for corporate office, 21,000. We're going to include that one. And then finally, selling, because remember, the, it's selling and administrative costs. So we want to include the selling side of it too. So selling expenses of 140,000. It was highlighted wrong there. It should be 140,000. Uh, but that's going to give us a total SNA expense of 336,000. So if we move that over to our income statement, put that in there, that's going to give us a net operating income of 120,000. And that's how you do the three stages of product cost flow.